She has her own cleaning business, and she's originally from Harlem, but moved to Georgia this past October to expand her cleaning company, and we'll talk about that as well. And I also want us to talk about dating intentionally. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Nigel. How are you doing this afternoon? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I am great. I've been recording all day um but this is what i do so i can't complain okay love meeting new people and um helping folks out here in these social media streets <laughs> <laughs> so you're turning 21 next week if 21 gets me a discount on these bills then yes i'm turning 21 again <laughs> but in all actuality i'm turning 39 on august 1st leo season that's what's up. I just thought I'll mess with you a little bit. Now, this dating intentionally thing, this is topic is dear, is dear to my heart because uh, I guess I'm a little older. So um, I went through a divorce, got remarried. And when I remarried, I was really about dating intentionally. So this is near and dear to my heart. Can you give me your definition of dating intentionally? What does that look like to you? I think what it means to me is <clears throat> knowing the end goal, I guess, purposely dating. Um, I've done different types of dating in my life. Sometimes it's just kind of like fly by night dating, just go on a few dates, don't want anything serious. Um, maybe I'm hungry. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, but you don't want anything serious to come of it. It's just having a good time with some people and Sometimes that's a like-minded kind of situation. A lot of people out there want to do that. But I think when you're dating intentionally, there's an end game, which is usually marriage. So you may be looking for different things than you would have casually dating when you're dating intentionally. You're taking it more seriously mm -hmm. when you're going into it. Mm -hmm. You're not really spending too much time with any BS because you don't have any time to waste when you're intentionally dating. That's what it means to me. That's real. Now, I agree because, you know, when you're a little younger, you know, you're like, hey, I'm going to be here forever. You know, I'm going to enjoy myself into each his own. I'm um, here for a good time, not a long time. That's yeah, what right. Buddies. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I've, I've heard that a lot. People be like, hey, I'm just here to, you know, have a good time. And that's cool. You know, so whatever people choose to do is what they choose to do. But I think the dating intentionally thing, some people feel pressure though, because you can come to that person and be like, <clears throat> you're talking to this person and you kind of let them know your goals. And sometimes that could, that can push people away because they like, oh, you're a little too serious right now. You know, it can push people away, but it can also cut out a lot of, a lot of BS. But then it also, I don't know, sometimes you'll come across people and a common question that you'll both have for each other in the beginning is what is it that you're looking for? Mm -hmm. So depending on whoever goes first may set the tone positively or negatively, honestly, because you may have a woman that goes first and says, you know, I'm looking for my future husband. Um, and that man may be so interested in that woman at that point in time that regardless if that's what he's looking for, he's going to say that's what he's looking for too. So that's up to you to know the signs that that person isn't serious, you know, as you move forward. But there are people that come into your life and say, I want marriage, this is what I'm looking for. But they're kind of only doing it to appease you because they, they like you, maybe they think you're cute. So they're telling you what you want to hear. But then you'll meet people that they also you know, they're saying, I am looking for a wife. I am tired of dating. I'm tired of seeing multiple women. I'm looking for somebody to grow with, somebody to build with, and you go from there. But you really only can see someone, okay, I want to backtrack. A lot of people have good intentions, but intentions sometimes aren't good enough if they are not carried out. I intend to do good every day. Will something mistakenly be at the bottom of my Target shopping cart when I leave? Possibly. But that is life. <laughs> <laughs> but we all intend 
a lot of times to do good, but it's our actions throughout that really decide if we're really serious about something or not. So we can be as intentional as we want to with this dating, but we still have to follow through. Ooh, I like that. That's good. Because <clears throat> people will talk a good game, especially, like you said, if the, if the woman goes first and he really likes you, he's not trying to lose this date. And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, I'm trying to uh, date intentionally too. You know, or you say- I definitely had a man, I think we were chatting on a site mm -hmm. and we were both asking each other, you know, what are you looking for? And he went first. He said, oh, well, you know, I'm not looking for anything that serious. If something happens, then, you know, I'm willing to go with the flow. And he asked me, well, what was I looking for? I said, well, I'm dating intentionally. I am looking for a serious relationship. So then he kind of was like, well, you know, I could do that too. <laughs> That's not what you just said. So I'm just going, I'm going to exit out because I can't, I can't do the flip flop. Yeah. I, you know, I love my brothers. I've been trying to defend my brothers a lot of times. And I'm just like, man, y'all be messing up. I can't defend y'all. Y'all keep messing up out here in these streets, man. We got to tighten it up. Oh, my God. So what is the biggest mistake you see women make while dating? I, I'll say mistakes that I feel maybe I've made. I okay. can really speak for a lot of people. Um, I feel sometimes... Um, I go in with these expectations, um, possibly, and I don't want to say that they're too high because everybody should have a standard level of expectations. You know, as you get older, they may change, um, but it's almost these expectations that I'm placing upon new people because old people have not done what they were supposed to do. Um, but that's not those people's fault. And I'm not saying I'm running around carrying a backpack of trauma, but um, of course, as you move through life, your expectations change because of your previous experiences. And sometimes just from a basic dating standpoint, in the beginning, those expectations may be a little bit too high. They may be a little bit too much for someone else. Um, we paint these pictures of what we want these relationships to look like before they've even started. Um, so that can be a fault. I know that's been a fault of mine. You'll meet people and you'll be like, you know, he's cool. I could see this future with da 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 But how could you? You literally went out for sushi with this man like once and just because he seems nice, you're planning, you know, your whole, duo together through life like we're gonna build together power couple <laughs> black love <laughs> so just in those first to two dates so I think myself and I'm sure other women is we paint these pictures um these colorful portraits when we've only had you know just a brush we haven't even received the paint yet because the time hasn't elapsed and just the expectations, I guess I would say, is the mistakes that I've made going in to situations. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to have a basic standard of expectations just as far as you want someone to treat you, how you want someone to treat you, just with common decency and respect. Um, and maybe just where they are in life. And I think that that varies depending on where you are in life. Mm -hmm. um, and also, this is just me personally. I cannot expect of someone what I am not giving myself. So can I, I cannot expect a man to make six figures if I am currently at Walgreens or whatever. And that's no shade to Walgreens, but they're not making six figures. Mm -hmm. So anything I ask of myself, I should be, you know, I can ask of someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of times that's where women make mistakes too, is we want people to have certain things that, some of us don't possess mm. so that doesn't make any sense and I, I get you want someone to uplift and help build you and stuff um, but what about the flip side what if he's not he's not willing to build a bear with you you know so I think that that's just some of the mistakes that I've made and I'm sure a lot of people a lot of women have made those too mm -hmm. yeah those expectations they could they could get you caught up every time huh expectations could definitely get you 
caught up because you're you're the only one, honestly, who knows what these expectations are. These are things in your mind and you're hoping that they kind of telepathically <laughs> go, this other person knows about what your expectations are too, you know? It could be simple things. Um, it's how you want someone to communicate with you. In your mind, you know how, but you haven't told that person because you're not even to the point of having conversations like that, but you're turned off because he doesn't do those things. So mm. it's like you set an expectation for this person, but they have no idea what you want. Um, <laughs> it's too early to even have conversations like that of, you know, those types of things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I did a video called um, What's Harming Your Relationship is Unsaid Expectations. Mm. And a lot of times, like you said, we have everything in our head and we just magically believe this person's supposed to catch it. I really be like, <laughs> you don't get it? You're not hearing it? Like, come on. And then, <laughs> and then, and then we have attitude when they don't get it. Exactly. Exactly. How dare you not read my mind? <laughs> you think what I'm supposed to think already. It's like, oh my god. So, how do you know when a man is worth your time, or when, or when he's playing games? I think for me, it's as simple as um, time is so valuable to me. It's the most precious thing that we have in life. It's more valuable than money. Um, when someone values your time. I think you can tell if the interest is there or not. Um, things come up, but as long as they're making time for you, uh, they're having respect for your time. If I have a busy schedule and I've been traveling um, and you want to see me, but I say, hey, I, you know, I'm tired. I've been traveling. I've been working. Um, just some respect for my time for me to just relax maybe a day. Or we can't we can't always both be busy. We all make time for what we want to, to be honest. Um, and I think that if both parties don't make the time, um, then it's not worth it. Uh, you can't build if you don't have any time. So that's normally my number one thing on if someone is wasting my time or not, is playing with my time. Because if we plan something, I guarantee you nine times out of 10, I could have been doing something else. Yep. Even if it is sitting on my couch, that is doing something to me because I don't get to do it enough. Um, so if I make plans with you and then you just cancel them, I feel like you're wasting my time because I could have been doing something else or I could have been doing something else with somebody else mm -hmm. that will respect my time enough. So that's kind of like my, my number one thing when I see if someone is wasting my time or not is time spent together i love that that's that's good because because one thing that i really valued about my wife when we were dating because we were dating long distance we always made time for each other you know i would be on break she would be going on a visit at work and she's like hey let's carve out this time call me in 15 minutes call me in like we would make that time and that's how i knew that she you know she was feeling me and yeah. we we did that almost a whole year before we end up, before I end up relocating. But I love that because your time, people start playing with your time, you're gonna lose me. Exactly. Exactly. Because if you're really interested in somebody, you want their time. You want their time. You don't want them to spend the time with anyone else. You want them to remain relevant. Honestly, that that's my big thing. If, if you are not relevant, you become forgotten to me. And that can that can be a quick transition for me. Mm -hmm. So if you're not remaining relevant, which comes with time, mm -hmm. I will move on. It's mm -hmm. not that I can detach from that very quickly. Mm -hmm. I like that. So you a swipe away, huh? <laughs> Wait, right is right is good. I think the left is <laughs> on the apps. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I want to switch gears a little bit uh, with this segment because uh, we talked offline previously and you talked about uh, the loss of your child. And I wanted to talk about the grieving process and how you handle that, because there's people that I get inboxes from who are in relationships, 
with people who might have lost a, a loved one and that person don't know how to love them effectively during this time of a loss. Mm -hmm. So how how do you how did you handle that grieving process if you have some tips for those who might be dealing with the loss of a child or or someone close to them? <clears throat> um I want to say uh, well for, for me in particular I'm still grieving. So uh, next next month will be 10 years since my daughter passed. Um, actually, tomorrow, uh, my daughter passed away when she was eight. Tomorrow would have been her 18th birthday. So I still, it's moments like this that make me grieve the most. Um, it's always going to be a process. Uh, for me, it's just, I don't know, I find, I, I grieve by finding strength in the memory. I stay busy. Um, I've just always been that type of person. To be honest, um, I've actually thought about going to do counseling because I never, I never did that. And I think that that may be a healthy, healthy journey for me in that. So that's a to be continued. Mm -hmm. um, but in regards to people helping other people grieve, um, everybody grieves differently. Um, I think it's just important to let somebody know that you're there for them, but depending on that person, not to be too overbearing, mm -hmm. I should say, um, because I'm, I'm more of a, if, if there's an event or a situation that reminds me of my daughter, I just like to be surrounded by people. And when I say surrounded by people, I'm not needing hugs or prayers at that moment. I just need to be busy. I want to have fun. I want to be surrounded by people that I love. So I think it's, it's really about knowing that person and knowing that they're different than you. Sometimes we mess up because we believe everybody grieves the same. So we feel some people may need to be coddled and hugged and stuff like that. When in all actuality, that could really bother some people. Mm -hmm. They just want to talk about, there's actually a guy that I had met, um, crazy enough we went on one date and the next the next day his son passed away mm -hmm. um I feel it, the situations are different of how our children pass but I still know that grief of losing a child and for me it was someone always kind of taking my mind off of it just finding some comfort in forgetting for the moment sometimes in the beginning if you can just forget until you're ready to personally you know, go through it. Um, so when I speak to him and I do things, I talk about everything other than that. unless he brings it up, then we talk about it. Um, you know, how does that make you feel? I may give some advice. Um, and also I would say if you've never been through that or I don't give the type of advice as if you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be there for somebody without acting like you know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I just think it depends on the person. Just pay attention to the person. Know how they are. Um, are they super sensitive? Are they not? If they're not a super sensitive person, then just consume them with everything else to talk about other than their grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they want to talk about it, they will talk about it. People talk about it when they want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. just, be, just be there for them. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something that's unimaginable. There's, there's no rule book to it. You kind of just take it one day at a time. Like I have my good days, my bad days. Sometimes it's holidays and I'm good. Sometimes it's holidays I'm not. And I think that's it's okay that this is the way that it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the people around me, it took them some time, but they they understand that now too. Okay. Well, uh, my condolences to you and uh, make sure I keep you in my prayers and stuff like that. And thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, I'm sure somebody will be able to, you know, uh, learn from what you're giving them. So thanks for sharing that. I truly appreciate that. Have a man ever been intimidated by you? And if so, is that a turnoff? <laughs> I think that there's a lot of men that's been intimidated by me. Would they say, uh, well, no, actually, I've had a couple men say I'm intimidated by you. It is a turnoff for me. Um, so I am, 
a take charge kind of person. I don't know if that's the Leo in me or whatever, um, but I've always just kind of been been that way. Um, I'm very, very strong willed, boisterous. Um, I am, I'm a dominant by nature. I can be submissive um, if I am dealing with a dominant. I can be a little bit more submissive. Um, and that is what I actually need. So if, I, if I'm a dominant personality, I can't deal with a submissive type of person. Mm. Um, it does turn, it does turn me off. Mm. Um, I, I need somebody, I don't know if this is gonna sound weird. I need somebody that could check me, but not disrespect me. Got you. Makes perfect sense. I've heard so, that. That's, that's kind of how I work. Um, but I've had a lot of people be intimidated just by the fact that I'm very boisterous. I don't bite my tongue. I'm trying to work on the filtering in between of relaying the messages. And is, that's, that's a work in progress right now. Is that the Harlem in you? I don't, it might be. You know what's crazy is I used to live on the West Coast. I lived in Portland, Oregon for 11 years and I feel like I was more timid then. Uh, then I came back home to New York and that did not work for me. <laughs> that worked for me. Uh, I'm now trying to find the middle. I gotta, cause as you get older, you need to find the middle. Cause you can't go from zero to 100 in every situation. It doesn't, it's not necessary. It's not even good for your health at a, this point. So I'm just trying to find that common ground. However, I'm always going to speak my mind about how I feel about something. And that can be intimidating to some people because though I'm just trying to be honest, yeah. you take it as aggressive and I'm, that's not my intention, but how can you know how I feel if I don't express how I feel. Um, so I think the intimidation sometimes comes from that um, and the fact that I'm not rich, but I do well on my own. Um, everything I have is me. I work hard. Um, sometimes my days are long. I don't, like I may wear these nails and have this hair and stuff, but I work hard. Like I get, grimy and gritty and sometimes that is intimidating to men because they feel like I'm like a man in some senses um also because I don't ask anybody for anything so I'm very independent so that can be intimidating to men too women being independent not to every man but some men they I don't know they find problems with that like I'll meet people and they'll say oh I'll buy this for you why why <laughs> I can buy it myself I got it I got it because I, I I mean I don't want to feel like I owe you something for this simple transaction that you're about to do that we ha we don't have that type of rapport for you to be buying me what you're offering to buy me so I just choose to decline and I always get people damn let somebody do something please you such a nigga like <laughs> I get that all the time so but I have been in relationships where I have been more submissive, but it definitely takes a, a, a bold type of man for that, um, that we, we blend a little bit better. I tried to date someone that I feel like was more submissive some years ago, yeah. um, because I was like, maybe I need to try something different. Whatever I'm doing is not working. That didn't work either, <laughs> because I feel like that was too forced for me saying, I need to force myself to date something other than what I want. Mm -hmm. So. I need somebody with that strong personality. Um, who gonna turn up with me at Walmart if the girl try to skip me in line? Just me. Like <laughs> I need, I need my partner by my side. That's real. <laughs> that's real. That's that's one thing I I know my wife will do. She will turn up with me if, if, if they can't. I know without a shadow of a doubt. So no, I feel you. That's what. But I'm a saying. strong personality can also keep you in your place too when it's not time for that. Someone who's not a strong personality, I may look at them and say, be quiet. Like, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but no, that's real. as you know, more dominant, I'll be like, you know what? You're right. I, I hear you. I'm tripping, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I hear you because uh, I had to, my wife had to talk me off a ledge the other day, and I was just like, not literally, but you know, I, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was too turned up, and I was like, I'm glad that she became my voice of reason because mm -hmm. so I feel you I feel you you know and while we were talking about that what, what do you think about 
because you talk about submission. I, I'm I'm stuck because sometimes there's women who are with guys, but don't trust their leadership. Mm. And I'll get an inbox and, and they talk about all the stuff that he's doing and or what he should be doing. And I'm just like, why are you with somebody and you don't trust their leadership? Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't think that I could be with somebody that I didn't trust their leadership or under, undermine their, their leadership. Mm. Um, what's the point? Mm. Um, I think if I'm in a relationship with someone, I, I do trust their leadership. I trust their opinion. I trust where they're going with things. Um, I may have, you know, I may have a different opinion of how I think something should be carried out than they do. Mm -hmm. Um, but because I trust in that person, I'm willing to try it their way. Um, and I think that that has a lot to do with if, you know, they have that kind of dominant kind of person not like they're that man's man to me i be telling people all the time i don't want to be no man i gotta be this way sometimes i'm not looking i would love to be soft and feminine all the time and yes. oh pull my chair out and oh, yes do this for me and do that for me but it's crazy how much the door is not opened mm. and you have to step through it yourself it's like men say they want these supposed submissive women but they leave so much on our plate for us to decide that we then become the dominant personality we're making all of the decisions mm. how can i be submissive to you when i'm deciding everything that goes on in this relationship it doesn't work that way you have to decide if you want me to be more submissive you have to take charge more and if you're not then i'm you know you're going to have to be a little bit more submissive. It, ha it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Mm. You can't have the cake and eat it too with that kind of topic. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, we can end the show right there. <laughs> That's good. That's real talk. I, hey, last question. I and mean, we kind of talked about this earlier. Do you think people's expectations are too high when it comes to finding a potential spouse? And I, I, we talked about that earlier, but do you think that, like, where do, where are these expectations coming from? Is, is it bad programming? Is it the way we were raised? Oh, I don't think that, I don't think, I think, it, like I said, I think it depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. I don't think from a general level that people's expectations are too high. I think depending upon who you are, know your level of expectations that you have um you know stay in your lane in a sense mm. um don't expect like i said earlier anything of somebody that you can't provide yourself um and don't expect someone to know something that you haven't relayed to them um they're not mind readers and just in the beginning when you're getting to know someone up uh, just have a basic standard of expectations as you move forward and learn how to communicate, you can share with each other how you feel about certain situations, but you shouldn't be expecting the same outcomes of long of a relationship that's been existing for three years versus the guy that you've been dating for two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, we think about these end goals and these relationships that we've had, maybe they lasted some years and we're like, this is where we were at year two. I need him to be like that in week two. It just doesn't work that way. And expectations come, you know, they come with time too. You have to see how each other functions. I feel like we should spend more time on getting to know one another and figuring out if that works with us instead of us trying to mold people into who we want them to be. We would spend a whole lot, lot less time wasting our time if we weren't molding individuals to who we want. That's where the expectations kind of mess up is mm -hmm. we expect certain things and then we say, you know, eventually I'll get them. I'll get them to be that way. Mm -hmm. But why not just sever ties in the beginning? You met them. It's not initially what you thought. You're not really feeling it. Mm -hmm. Just move on. It's that serious. It's that simple, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. when you spend so much time then you're like well I've already invested this amount of time so I need you to be who I want you to be 
And that's where them expectations take a turn. Damn. Isn't it interesting how we can say that we love someone and then try to change them? Exactly. Because I, I tell, I've said this in countless amount of relationships. I would say, you know, I am all about positive changes. Mm -hmm. um, but the core of who I am, I love who I am. And I'm looking, I'm not looking for anybody to change that. I will not change that. And if you love me, that means you love the core of who I am. If I curse like a sailor and you believe that I should slow down on it, I can appreciate that. But the very fiber of my beings mm -hmm. you're trying to change, that's not love. Mm -hmm. You're trying to program me in a sense. At the end of the day, you might as well just go get a robot if that's the case. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that you can't change some some habits. Maybe somebody's trying to look out for you, but your, your core of who you are, those are things that you... You. I'm unwilling to change for anybody. I like me. Mm -hmm. I got to love me first. But if we're, we're talking about simple things like, you know, cursing and attitude adjustments and things like that. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good for everybody. You yeah. know, that's, that's positive changes. However, I still don't want anybody um, being overbearing and hovering over me about it. Like, Oh, swear jar. <laughs> <laughs> like not I'm to old, I'm with me like that like or even like something as simple as you know when you go on a diet when you go on a diet you should never tell anybody that you're going on a diet because once you tell everybody you're going on a diet they're going to remind you that you're on a diet if you're not following your diet so it's like it's just overbearing it's like somebody can tell you you know I think you would be good if you lost like five or ten pounds I'm not offended by something like that mm. but if I'm eating the way that I eat I don't need anybody like you shouldn't eat that you shouldn't mm. do that you should like I don't need it reinforced in that way but positive changes are always good but it's about how you communicate these positive things um and it always has to be in agreement if they're wanting to change these things too. Cause just cause you think it's something I should change doesn't mean that I see anything wrong with it. Mm. Um, but just like deeper core stuff, like personality wise, how someone is, mm. I've learned in life to take people as they are. Um, I, ha I have to decide if I want that in my life or not. Mm -hmm. I can't get mad that someone is the way that they actually are. <laughs> that's ridiculous that's ridiculous so when we meet people they're showing us exactly who they are they are we just see what we want to see we're 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 outweighing um good with bad like eh, but he and then later mm -hmm. on we're like eh, i don't like how you do that but it turns out he did it on the first day <laughs> so <laughs> like we gotta just I would say in, in dating my number one it's like the last thing I'll say is we gotta pay attention pay attention pay attention and go with your gut whether you're a man or a woman go with your gut and pay attention and just move accordingly mm -hmm. you will not have so much time wasted if you evaluate properly mm -hmm. from the beginning yes the vetting process is very important well, the vetting process is so important, so important, because I, I, uh, if I would have vetted, I would have vetted, I, I don't think I would have had half the situations I would have had, so. Yeah, we live and we learn. We live and we learn, and now I am swimming in this Georgia swamp dating water, so <laughs> we'll see if I can make my way out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nigel, I want to thank you for your time. Also, um, Feel free to uh, tell us about your business and what you have going on. Okay, so my business is residential and commercial cleaning. Um, we service New York, New Jersey, and Georgia. It is called Maids to Shine. So that's M-A-I-D-S-T-O-S-H-I-N-E. Uh, my website is maids to shine usa.com. My Instagram is M, the number two, S, LLC Instagram, whatever HDD, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll if link it up in the show. Notes. It's your shiny cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> there you go. 
I'll have that tagged up in the show notes so that way anybody want to get in touch with you, they might see this video and be like, hey, I need to call Nigel. Cutest leader out here. Hello. Cutest <laughs> leader out here. <laughs> and, and wait till people see the YouTube video. You got to show them your nails. <laughs> I show up. I clean too. So along with the people that I employ, they be like, you got to clean with those nails on? Yep. I got you. And I get down and dirty. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking some time out today. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for being transparent um, about the things that you've been through in life, you know, the ups and downs. I appreciate it. And I also want to acknowledge you for still keeping a smile on your face despite adversities and things. I mean, none of us are immune, but you sharing those things, especially out in this world, this social media world, people are trip. Um, so I want to acknowledge you for those things and even acknowledge you for starting your business and being an entrepreneur and running your own show. That's what's up. So um, I want to acknowledge you for those things. So continue to do what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate you. No problem. Brave Hearts community. Make sure you get in touch with Naja. She has a lot of good stuff going on. I had a great opportunity to meet her online and we had some conversations and I was just like, I got to bring her on the show. So. <laughs> This is this was your treat today. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share with a friend, someone who might need this, someone who is planning on dating intentionally. I created a whole online five part video series on this very topic. So make sure that you get it. I'll have that in the description below.